I'm absolutely thrilled to be here working with all of you today. I think you probably got a gist from what's just been said about me that um, making music is something I'm very passionate about and finding ways to involve as many people as possible in as many ways as possible is something that really drives me and has driven me into setting up the foundation that we run and in Voches 8. Um, I used to sing in Voches 8. I've actually just stepped down after 11 years in the group and while I'm here, they're doing their first concert of the new season, which is the first time I've been somewhere and they've been somewhere else. They're in Milan, Italy. I'm here in Depaul. So hasn't that worked out well for both of us? <laughs> I think it has. Um, and today is the first day. We have some Americans in the room, right? Some, some Americans. And this is a very seminal moment in Voce's 8's history because it's the first concert we've ever given with an American in Voce's 8. So well done. You've infiltrated <laughs> across, across the pond. Um, what we're going to do today is very, very simple. We're going to look at three kind of examples. And in the middle of those three, I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes. And if you have any questions, there may be time at the end. Depends if I manage to keep within the time limit that I'm allowed. The board is going to start flashing. Five, four, three, two, one, and we'll see how it goes. There are four instructions you need to know. Stop, louder, quieter, keep on going. Is that OK? Complex stuff? Sorry. Is that OK? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you exist. Great. Um, I have a feeling there are lots of very good musicians in the room, so I'm going to go quite quickly through all of this stuff, and then we're going to think about why we were doing all those things afterwards. So it's very simple. If you're holding anything, put it down. I'm not going to make you stand up or anything, but I am going to make you copy whatever I do starting from now. mostly to make you look great, and you did. Turn to the person next to you and go, hello. Yeah. Turn to the person on the other side and go, hey. Yeah. Oh, and even a kiss, I loved that. That was beautiful. That was, is that OK, what just happened down there? I hope so. Um, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> it's an international conference. We greet each other in so many ways. Uh, very good. Copy me again. And say for me, dumb. dumb. T. T. Quiche. T. T. Dumb. T, quiche, T, dumb T, quiche, T, dumb T, quiche, T, very good, dumb T, quiche, T, 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 and keep going, dumb T, quiche, T, and a one, two, three. Four, stop. Very, very good. Who got that totally 100% right? No ha One hand! And it was the lady who got kissed. Clearly it was a magical moment. Very, very good. Say for me, instead of dumb, say dum. Instead of T, say t. Instead of quiche, say k. Instead of T, say t. So now we have dum t. And a one, two, three, four, stop. Very good. That's our first rhythm. We're going to work with that in a minute. Can you remember that for like a minute? <laughs> Nobody said yes. This is really bad, guys. Come on. I, I believe in you. I believe in you. Uh, the second rhythm goes like this. In fact, just say for me first. One. one four. Four. Seven. seven eight. eight. Now say with your hands. One, four, seven, eight. One, four, seven, eight. Very good. <laughs> and... Now, watch me the first time, then join in the second time. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. And stop. Perfect. Very good. So we have two rhythms. The first rhythm goes. And the second rhythm, we clap on which numbers? There we go. You're, you're right in the vibe now. I like this. Over here, you guys are going to be team number one. Let's call you team A, like Avengers. OK? Aven anyone like you? No, no. OK. Over here, you're going to be team X for the X-Men. Is that OK? OK, down here. Um, this means, of course, you are all now marvelous. Ah. I came with that, uh, cut up with that on the plane on the way over. I was very chuffed, but now you know why I'm a musician and not a stand-up comic. Over here, you guys are going to be dum over here, you guys are going to be one, four, seven, eight. Is that okay? We'll start with them, then you keep it going, and I'll help you guys out. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. 
Keep that going. Very good. One, two, and one, two, three, four. Everybody. And a one, two, three, four, and stop. Very good. That's our first little musical example. We're going to come back to why we were doing that later on. The second one is a little bit different. Uh, Greg, where's Greg? He was here somewhere. He probably left when he realized he'd have to join in. Um, Greg talked about John Cage earlier. I've, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 you mean me? <laughs> is, are, are there any other Gregs in the room? Maybe there are, actually. But anyway, I was, I was talking about you, Greg. Um, he talks about John Cage. Um, who is published by Edition Peters as well, so I thought they're going to be happy with me if I can do something a bit John Cagey. And knowing that there's a lot of amazing musicians in the room, I wanted to just create a piece like a world premiere with you now. Is that okay? Uh huh. Three people are up for this. The rest are like, <laughs> why did I come? It said inclusive on the title. I should have left, gone for a drink. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, like a little, little world premiere. It's going to be very short. And you can basically do whatever you want. These are the rules. The rules are you can use any sound that we've just made or something similar. So you can use like a sh, k, t, p, any, any vocal sound. You can use anything like this if you want to, anything like that. I'm going to give you four notes. A, B, G, E. Can you just say for me? La, 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 la. Oh, beautiful. Okay, those are your four notes. You can play with those any way you like. And I'm going to ask uh, for an assistant. And the assistant I'm going to ask for doesn't actually know I'm about to ask him to do this. Um, <clears throat> Dallas. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Dallas, would you join us on the stage? Could you give Dallas a big round of applause? So Dallas uh, is going to be the conductor. Dallas was an intern with us over the summer, so he's used to me being really mean, and this is an example of that. So Dallas, if you can stand in the middle of this lovely rug, perfect. Uh, Dallas isn't actually going to conduct. He's not going to wave his arms, he's not going to set a tempo. What he's going to do is just time you, okay? There are going to be two movements. Each of those movements will be less than 30 seconds, and the first movement theme that we're going to take, um, I left Chicago early this morning, and as the sun came up, it was beautiful, and then it got really misty. So I think we're going to use that as the first kind of idea for our first movement. It's going to be kind of misty, okay? I want you to just think about that, the four notes, the sounds. And the second idea, the second movement that we're going to go with is a bit more kind of birds awakening. Or it might not be birds, it might be animals. There's an amazing nature reserve just around the corner from here. If you have time, check it out. Um, so imagine what might wake up in that. And you can make any sounds that go with that. You can use noises and you have your four notes. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Dallas is in charge. Do you have a watch? Uh, you're just not prepared to be put on the spot, Dallas. <laughs> Here, here's your watch. I'm going to play some noodles on the piano as well. And I can't really play the piano, so it's going to be good. Dallas will start us, he'll stop us. When, he's think, when he thinks there's been enough space, he'll start the second movement. Okay, so this is two movements of a new composition, a world premiere featuring all of you. Your notes just from memory are here.
I, I, to be honest, I would love it to be more than two movements. I would love this to go on all day, but the lady with the magic numbers is going to start doing this already. Is it, is it this? Are we at this? Awesome, thank you. Um, so, two ideas. We're going to do a third to finish in just a couple of minutes. Um, but the idea of what I wanted to talk to you about today is linking with a practical way to get into music education. Um, you are all either studying music education, studying music, or professors in it, so there's a lot of stuff I don't need to say to you, and if you have questions, I'd love to talk to you over the weekend. Um, but for me, the two different examples that we've just used there give us two ideas. The first one is inclusivity. Um, for me, it's absolutely vital that we find ways to connect into our communities and actually, I think what we did with those first two rhythms, we had the to give us a beat. We started with rhythm, and we started with something that had a nice bit of brain activity going in as well, to really just begin to stimulate us. Just because we're trying to be inclusive doesn't mean we want to not be um, challenging people to be better. So all the time, we're trying to find this balance between keeping the fast, amazing students engaged, but also making sure there's an opportunity for everyone to get involved somehow. Again, what we've already heard today, thinking about these ideas of how we reach out into our communities to create our next generations of listeners, of audience goers. I may have a conversation with Greg later about some of the things you said, because I think it's very interesting. But I think how we get into schools is critical. Um, over the last 10 years, we've worked in Rochers 8 now with something over 300,000 students. We go into hospitals, prisons, uh, young offenders institutes. We've worked in any, every imaginable situation with kids from very tough backgrounds through to the most privileged kids. And for me, one of the most exciting things that we do is actually finding ways to build bridges. I think finding ways to connect a community which often has an amazing school and some schools that are not so good, certainly musically, not so good, and find a way to connect them, both across similar age brackets, but also top-down, is absolutely vital. Um, that inclusivity can happen so much better if we can get rid of three things, which I constantly think are problems. Um, money is the first one. Personally, we all have this money issue in our life. We all have to make a living, right? All of you young people who are thinking, how am I going to be a professional musician? What am I going to do? That's a real big issue. How do we make a living? So we have to get past that, and then socially we have to think, how do we deal with the social issues of lack of funding for music in education? Time, I only have 21 minutes. That's sometimes more than people get in their musical curriculum. Certainly in the UK, there are real issues with how much time is given to music. So how do we overcome that? And personally, how do we have time to do all the stuff we want to do? And the third one is fear. How do we overcome the fear that we have to join in, that we have to stick up our hands and ask a question, that we have to come and stand on stage and do something? The fear that someone might have to sing in public is something I come across because of my job a lot. And I'm afraid when I sing in public. It's, it's supposed to be a bit nerve-wracking, nerve you know? It's not about saying, I'm afraid of something, so I'm not going to do it. It's about finding a way to embrace that fear and find a way to move past it. And whether that's working in, I mean, we work in France, in Japan, here in the US, we, we tour for two months every year, we work all around the UK, constantly now trying to offer strategies. Singing strategy is a big thing in the UK at the moment, isn't that wonderful? Can you imagine singers getting in a room and talking about strategy? It's really awesome. We're terrible at it, but we, <laughs> we try. Um, trying to find these solutions. So that's the first idea. The second one that we just touched on with the John Cage idea is creativity. How do you find a simple way to engage people? What we just created there was definitely crazy music, but actually, it sounded awesome. I really thought there were some fantastic sounds there. And if I'd had an hour with a group of teenagers who uh, you would say probably they're not going to like classical music, well, actually, you find a way through. And finding the way, the right language to speak to them with, that's how we have to deal with this. It's not saying they're not going to do it or patronizing them in any way. It's speaking to them as adults, as people who have their own opinion, and persuading them otherwise. So that's the second idea. We have to embrace that creativity, and we have to work out how to have a dialogue. The third idea is about empowering. And to get that idea on the way, we're going to finish with a bit of a song. And I have prepared them for this. You'll be delighted to know. We have four students from the university who are going to come and help me out with this. So could you give a big welcome to, uh, actually, what am I calling you? Um, there was a debate whether they could be Voches 4 or uh, whether they should be the quarter tonics. And um, Voches 4 did not win. So uh, please welcome to the stage the quarter tonics. <laughs> So 
So, um, Tess is singing soprano. Hands up if you're a soprano. Okay, good, we have some. This is useful. Uh, altos, that's Molly. Any altos in the room? Great. Tenors, this is Dallas. Anyone tenor? Excellent. Normally, oh, two. Awesome. And uh, on bass, there must be a lot of basses then. Yeah, there we go. And this is Dylan. So, um, all you're going to do, they're going to start singing. It's a song some of you might know. Um, and we're going to start singing a little bit. When I do that, you're going to stop and we're going to just listen to what they sing to us because it sounds great. Um, we're going to start by doing this. Thank you for the magic number. Can you all just do this with me? Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Very good. One more. Perfect. So we're going to start by all doing that. Then we're going to sing a little bit of text which uh, has the words, I was following the. Okay? Can you say, oh, some people, oh, someone did a snap. Is that good then? <laughs> Is a snap good? It's like, yes. Um, does anyone else know this song yet? Hands up if you think you know the song. Okay. The young people know this song, everybody. Um, so, uh, can you just say for me, I was following the. I was following the. Great. And then we're going to ask that question a few times, and these guys are going to answer it for us. They're going to sing a little bit, and then we're going to do two chords. Do you think we can manage two chords? The two chords that we're going to do are E major and A major. So we have this. Can you all just pick a note in there and sing to O? Perfect. And then, very nice, the second chord is this. Pick a note and sing. Great. Now let's start back to E. And change when I give you the signal. Nice, and back again. Great, that's so beautiful, really, really nice. Um, so that's how we're going to do the middle section. So I'll just give you ooze, and then we're going to move on again, do a bit more of that. If you see me doing this, join in, and we're going to finish by doing that as well. Is that okay? Okay, this is the White Winter Hymnal. It's by Fleet Foxes, um, and it's been covered by Pentatonix as well, hence the Quartertonix, for those of you who wanted to see the incredibly humorous name that we've dealt with today. Um, so, uh, we're going to start like this, and then we're just going to join in one by one. I'll kind of talk us through as we go. Good luck. Are you excited or scared? <laughs> and a little bit scared. Into the woods, love it. Um, right, so, so, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, Tess is going to be starting us off in a minute. Have you got your note, Tess? Yeah? Yeah, she's got it. Molly's our pitch machine over here. So, everyone with me? Two, three, four. 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 I was Sopranos joining, here we go. I was following the... Bit louder, Sopranos. Very nice. Altos coming in. Here we go. Altos. I was following the Very nice. Tenors. Here we go. Get ready. Tenors. Basses, you have one note to deal with. It's going to be tough. Get ready. Oh, one, two, three, four. Bring the volume up. Fantastic. And down. One more time.
Could you give them a big round of applause? idea is empowerment. How do we uh, find ways to work with the incredible students that we have at our fingertips and get them to engage in some way? Now, if you imagine the impact that what you've just done with these fabulous four young singers would have had if they'd gone into a local school and worked with those kids, that's where we find the inspiration. It's not doing it ourselves, it's finding a way to empower the other people that we're working with. And that's the, the final message I'd like to leave you with. If you'd like to stay in touch or come find me, then that's the name of our group. And that's me. So <laughs> I've never seen my head so big. Isn't that great? Um, if you want to get in touch, please come and find me. But thank you for being a wonderful audience today. Um, and good luck with the rest of the weekend and the rest of your musical careers. Thank you very much. Thank you.